everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of the discussion during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can see the final product on the air at the same channel, youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And if you're uh, here during the live taping, uh, please post any questions and comments onto uh, the Facebook thread that we've created. Or you can just send a direct message to me on Facebook um, because the YouTube comments just do not work during the live tapings. Um, and now a word from our sponsors. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, Homebody products, and fresh produce. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She paid for costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market. So please find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. So I want to uh, preface this whole thing that uh, we have two guests here. Sorry, we have two guests here today, um, and Michael won't be here today. But um, And John will be on in about 15 minutes, John uh, Moss. But right now we have Sarah Perkins, a longtime friend of uh, Michael and ours, uh, my, Michael and myself, uh, on this group that we have, uh, CSA, uh, on Facebook. Anyway, uh, Sarah, hi. Hey. Uh, yeah, so um, where can we find you? Where's your Facebook page? Um, I have a Facebook page called Dirty Anarchist Kids, and it's basically just kind of chronicling our life as little mini anarchists. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, you, uh, the whole point of this episode is to talk about unschooling and homeschooling, and uh, I, I need to ask the, what the, que uh, I need to ask the, I cannot talk tonight, um, <laughs> I need to ask the question, what is the difference between unschooling and homeschooling? What is the difference there? Um, it's, it just varies between people, <laughs> and there's one of my little people. <laughs> Um, for me, homeschooling, and for me and my children, homeschooling is more um, structure, but specifically work structure. Um, you know, you follow the grades. Uh, first grade, you need to learn this. Second grade, you need to learn this. Third grade, you need to learn this. Well, I have some very atypical children. So a couple of them, actually, are pretty atypical. <laughs> um, and so that kind of structure does not work for us. Uh, so our unschooling days usually consist of <laughs> cooking breakfast. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, cooking breakfast, um, and they'll play on their tablets and they'll play their learning games. And um, then we go out. Like today, we harvested all of our broiler chickens, and so they learned all the stuff from the inside of the chicken. It's not necessarily okay. We have to learn this. It's hey, we have this opportunity, let's figure something out. Um, and really, yeah. it's letting my children kind of lead the way. Um, they, they show me what they like, um, and then we go with that. Um, my oldest loves horses, and so she's always into horse books. She draws nope. horses. I love horses. They all love horses. <laughs> So we go from, it's not necessarily, okay, let's learn our multiplication tables. It's like, hey, Grace, what do you like? Horses. Okay, let's go to the library. 
Right. So right. That's, that's the biggest difference to me. It's not as structured. Right. Uh, so just to relate it, uh, I, when I grew up, uh, like when I was three or something, I, I started reading an encyclopedia because I was ridiculous. Like it, my mom had encyclopedia books in, uh, in her bedroom, and I don't know, I just pulled it out a couple times and read it. And so I'm curious, uh, uh, does that kind of thing, uh, you know, happen, or is it mostly... Uh, just hands-on kind of things, um, as opposed to no books, no, no uh, nothing like that. Oh no, we have we have one, two, three. We have four bookshelves full of books, um, and they range, you know, from just little small books, um, toddler books, to uh, have Murray Rothbard. And my children will go and look through all of them, um, you know, from you know my first words books to my <laughs> my book on the history of circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of go with whatever they need. Um, right now, we are very much into a hands-on type learning because I have younger children, and they learn better that way. Um, only one of my children can read just yet. Yeah. So, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of um, yeah, it just really is. And they'll, they talk to me a lot. Not yet, baby. Um, they talk to me a lot, and they let me know things that they want to do, the things that they want to see, things that they want to hear. And so, I mean, of course, YouTube is huge for us because um, we live out in the country in the library. Um, but, yeah, learning happens every day. Um, my second oldest is learning how to read slowly um, with mostly recipes. She loves to bake with me, and so when we're not in a hurry, <laughs> which we usually are, um, she will get to sit there and actually read the recipes with me and learn how to bake that way. Um, no, I do. And, and this one does, too. <laughs> so it, it's not, you kind of have to change your mindset. Um, you know, sitting here talking to you, um, they're learning. They're learning how videos work. They're learning how computers work. They're learning... Um, how to keep calm? Not really, but <laughs> <clears throat> so no it, medication, it, though, right? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, I'm looking behind you, and you have the planets behind you, and so there's a little bit of science, and I definitely appreciate that. That's really <laughs> awesome. It looks like a my, school room <laughs> in a way. Yeah. <laughs> well, my biggest thing, hey, Chrissy, um, is to just have things available. To my children, um, I think Sandra Dodd is one of the really big unschoolers, um, and she does radical unschooling, which is like whole life unschooling. Um, and it's like you strew things all through the house, learning things. Like there's that I behind me. Um, we have tons of books, of course. We have posters of the ABC. You know, just like a regular school. Um, we have gloves. We have Legos, we have things that interest the children that they can actually learn from um, all throughout our house. And there is no outside inside of our house. Everything is just around. <laughs> we, we go on scooters and bicycles all in the house. and um, it, It's just uh, living life. Think of summer all the time. <laughs> Once you really change your mind and think about how children really do learn because they really learn from play. Everything is learning. It's not just, oh, we're playing on, you know, our tablets or whatever. They're learning through all of it. Right. So uh, another thing is, um, I guess this is a little bit more uh, um, question about how you deal with the government. How does that work? Uh, do you need to sign something in order to... Do it yourself uh, instead of yeah. It, Not in the state of Texas, no. Luckily, okay. Uh, uh, if your children are in school, you have to just sign a piece of paper that says you're pulling them out of school and that you're going to homeschool them. But that's it. Other states require more. Um, Texas, Alaska, Oklahoma, those are like really good states to unschool in because you don't have to give them any paperwork. You don't have to give them grades. You don't have to make your children take tests. You don't have to do anything, really. Wow. The only test that they'll have to take, um, if they want, 
is going to be uh, their test for their GED or SAT and ACT score or testing um, if they want to get into college. But that's not necessarily, necessarily something we're putting on our children. Um, if they want to, then they can, and we'll you know help them through that because that's what we do as parents um, is help them through their education process, whichever way that may go. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and you're not paying extra taxes on top, no, nothing like that. It's totally uh, separate. Like you're not. Uh, there's a f there's no extra fee because you want to do it yourself, right? Yeah, not in Texas. Um, I have friends in um, like Tennessee, uh, and one of the laws is you have to um, be under an umbrella school, or you have to send in testing, I believe. Um, and you can be under this umbrella school, and then you have to pay that school. Wow. Um, but no, we don't have to do that here. Right. Right. Wow. <laughs> yes, I. You want to. All right. Um, yeah, I guess that's... we do pay school taxes, though. <laughs> right. I'm going to have kids someday. Uh, what I want is to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I'm not going to send them to public school. The whole thing. And I um, was thinking about private school. Um, I'm. Uh, I don't know. Um, of course, this is a couple of years down the line. But I'd like to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And so this is really important stuff and I think this is something that most people really should think about but they just do the default thing and say hey am I gonna be in a good school area you know yeah. for a public school and yeah. you know because they're already paying taxes so they're like oh okay the public school can do it or whatever I think that's what's going on in the back of their heads um, well and it's easy um, don't get me wrong there are days when I'm like uh, when does the bus come to pick you guys up. <laughs> it's easier to do it that way. Um, the, the biggest thing that I would recommend to um, new parents or people, parents who are actually thinking about um, unschooling or homeschooling who may not be able to, is you can unschool while your children are in public school. The Being, being from a peaceful home is going to do so much more um, than you know going to public school and your parents aren't paying attention to you. Um, you know, getting off your phone, off your computer when your children are not in school and paying attention to them, um, being peaceful with them, working through things with them instead of you know just a normal oh my gosh go do your homework be quiet I'm trying to cook dinner kind of thing. When all they've been doing all day is sitting and being quiet, um, it's a, it's a big change from what most people have lived their entire lives but once you really get into it it's the best thing ever and you see your children start to blossom into people that you didn't even think they could be right so. they they probably um, <clears throat> you're probably nurturing their imagination and their learning just because you're interacting with them uh, and you're not just reprimanding them for everything they do wrong yeah. even though it's not wrong <laughs> there's nothing they do wrong really uh, yeah. the only well, thing they uh, can do wrong is steal <laughs> really yeah. anyway don't, don't take something well and we do and from a very young age we do teach our children um, encroachment uh, you know your body and your property is yours their body and their property is theirs that's like the hard and fast rule you don't encroach on somebody else's anything you can ask, and you know, if they say yes, and that's great and wonderful. But otherwise, you don't mess with people. And then, if you do something wrong, you have to take responsibility for those wrongdoings and deal with whatever consequences there are. Um, and I think those two things of you own your own body, and you also have to be responsible for your own body. If you can get those two things into your children, they will be set. There will be hard times, and there will be things that are child <laughs> <Don't. laughs> um, But if <laughs> okay, Eleanor, Eleanor Elizabeth, <laughs> you have to be quiet. Anyway, sorry, I'm instigating. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm used to that. I have a 30-year-old son, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get along with him famously. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Yeah, but it's, stuff. it really is, um, it's not about the schooling. It's, it's about how you, you react and interact with your children that is what's going to make, make or break them, basically. Like you'd say encroachment or aggression or whatever you want to call it. It's just be yourself, but don't hurt other people. Don't. It's really simple stuff, yeah. And yeah. Which it's is, really good that you're doing that because most people won't right. remember this stuff. They 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 may speak to it. You know, they might say, "Hey, don't hit, don't steal, don't do this, don't do that." But why is the question? You know, and most people won't go that far. I guess. Um, I, I think I just want to get this in uh, while we have the time. Um, I'm going to go over the, the prices. So the last time we did this show was March 16th, uh, and tonight I took the prices, uh, tonight being t March 23rd. Tonight I took the prices at 823. Uh, last time silver was 1563. Tonight it's 1698, so it went up $1.35 over one week. Uh, it's up 8.6%. Wow. Gold. Went from 11.5620 to 11.8938. That's 33.18. That's 2.9 percent. And Bitcoin went down from 290.23 to 265.94. That's 24 dollars and 29 cents. That's 8.4 percent. Uh, but yeah, so gold and silver are kind of going back up. Uh, 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 so they've been low for quite some time, uh, and they seem to be escalating quite a bit quickly. But again, it's volatile. You know, it's just price. Uh, Bitcoin seems to be going with the price of the dollar, which is backwards, and if something's wrong. Maybe it's just high still or something like that. Even Michael is like, get out of it. But he's like, give it to me. But so, whatever. I, uh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so you know, you never know about these prices. But at the same time, I feel like the dollar is gonna like just plop or something. So um, yeah, go ahead. Um, and I'm not. Um, I'm more of an agorist than anything. Um. Yeah. I'm, we don't do money. I mean, we do money if we have to, obviously. We have bills to pay. Um, but what are your thoughts on not necessarily sticking with gold and silver and Bitcoin, but in trading? Where do you, where do you, think, do you see that? You yeah. Mean, do you yeah. see that getting bigger? <clears throat> um, yeah. I, I always thought that agorism in that sense was a great idea. I mean, if you can do it. Because... The only reason why money is great is because it's like a medium of exchange as opposed to a direct exchange. So, you know, if you can barter, yeah, go for it. I, I don't have any problem with that, you know what I mean. Uh, and I, as long as you value, uh, as long as the, um, as long as two people feel like exchanging stuff, then yeah, that's great. Or, you know what's even better? When they when people feel like it is if they excuse me if they gift um, something to another person you know out of their the kindness of their hearts if they want to you know the, that's that's the force of communism you know trying to gift things yeah you know, but uh, yeah if that would be great bartering's great any kind of exchange is great uh, doesn't matter what it is silver, Bitcoin, dollars even, or just direct exchange food for a uh, uh, bass guitar, because I like bass guitar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> no, I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, you can give me the food. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so I have the pleasure of introducing John Moss back to the show. Hey, uh, John, welcome back. How are hey, you? Man. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, thanks for coming back. Sarah, what's up? How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, so uh, we've been talking a little bit about how uh, Sarah, uh, you know, t 
teaches her kids, even though their it's their curiosity that's uh, kind of driving the whole program that she has. You know, it's not a real program, but you know what I'm saying. It, she, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds amazing. Quite honestly, uh, the fact that uh, she can, she has kids that are curious and. You know, she can teach along the way. You know, just when she says the opportunity arises, like today, there was there were chickens that they had cut up to make chicken. That that's freaking awesome. <laughs> you know, a chicken <laughs> fanatic like me, I gotta love this. Anyway, and they were um, good. They were like eight to ten pounds too. <laughs> oh man, I'm jealous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, John. Um, so what can you throw into the? Uh, conversation. Um, you, you have a daughter, right? Yeah, I have a uh, I have a six year old daughter. Uh, my wife and I made the decision to yank her out of the schools uh, last year. We had her in kindergarten. <clears throat> yeah, thumbs up. Uh, we had her. We had her in kindergarten, and it was so frustrating. And she was just absolutely miles ahead of her peers with reading and even just like just reasoning and speaking and just just general demeanor just miles ahead of her, of her peers, and when we went to her, her reading teacher, we said, listen, she's excelling at reading. You guys need to push her. They said, well, we don't really do that. We don't really skip ahead grades and blah, 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 blah. And basically what they, were, what they were saying was that you've got kids up here and you've got kids down here, and when you have 20 kids in a classroom, they all come to about here. You understand? Right. Get like that. That they give you that one size fits all education and like I said there's kids up here and there's kids down here and everybody learns at a different rate. I'm not saying the kids down here are stupid that may or may not be the case right. but maybe they just don't respond well to <clears throat> being shoved in a classroom with 20 other kids their exact age uh, being barked at by an authority figure all day. <clears throat> I never understood when I was growing up I never understood the fact that some people don't test well. I, I still, in a sense, don't get it because I, you know, just do it. You know, I just do the test and whether I know it or not, well, there's my answer. That That's just the way I am. But um, I do understand the fact that people learn at a different pace, and I, I hate the fact sure. that it's so standardized. No matter what it is, either you failed or you didn't. It's that simple for them. Right, and the problem is they're not... <clears throat> oh, go ahead, Sarah. No, no, it's fine. You can go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought anyway. Go ahead. I'll pick it up. Oh. Sorry, John. I haven't y'all seen the... Um, I don't even know. It's, I'm sure it's a meme somewhere. Um, but it's the... You can... If you teach... Or if you grade everyone on how to fly, the fish are always going to fail. It's not necessarily, oh, this child learns faster. It's this child learns different. This child learns differently. Oh, look, these two learn the same. Let's put them in a group and, you know, we'll figure out how to figure out what they know. Right, and, yeah. And that, you know, like, screw all the other kids. Yeah, exactly. Well, and they've got it so um, everyone has to be normal. Well, I have four children, and none of them learn the same. None of them. Um, I have one that will read all day long and learn everything. And then I have another one that will go out and weld with her father and will cut the heads off of chickens. And she'll do math problems in her head without even knowing what she's doing. But Cheers. she really picks up a book. Hmm. And, awesome. of course, then I have a two- and a four-year-old that are just, you know, feral children that run around naked all day. <laughs> so, so specifically, Sarah, you unschool, right? As, as do I. Yes. You unschool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I really think that's where it's at because, well, I mean, regular homeschooling is cool too, but with, with a curriculum and, and testing and all that other stuff, all you're doing is bringing public school home to your, you're bringing public school home. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I first learned about unschooling, it was at Porkfest last year at the homeschool meet and greet, and these two ladies that were talking to me about homeschooling, and it was, I mean, uh, unschooling specifically, and the way, the way it came off when they said, like, no curriculum, no structure, no nothing, 
I was just like, great, these people are just like running around naked all day playing video games and not doing a goddamn thing, but you know, just, what, are you, what are you doing? What, you're not, you're, what are you watching TV all day? But the more I talked to them, the more I, I understood is that you unschool your kids every day, whether you, whether you realize it or not. And um, uh, here I could, um, I, I'm going to take a second here and shout out real quick someone from one of our groups, uh, Kara from CSA. I, I, was, yeah. I was talking to Kara a while ago about homeschooling and unschooling. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, she was like, "Well, what if what if my kids just want to watch Transformers all day?" And I said, "Well, then you turn it into a lesson. Maybe they'll be fascinated with robotics and and you know how things how robots work and how to program uh, how to program computers and robots to do things." <clears throat> and uh, that's, I was like, "Good, good." Well, uh, I, I think that <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> love it. Sarah, you go. I think that's the part that scares people the most about unschooling is because their mindsets are so into, okay, this is what we did in school because most of us grew up in school, um, that they don't see watching Transformers as something that could be learning. They see their children, are they like a movie, and so they watch the movie over and over and over and over and over again, and then that's it. They don't go anywhere with, uh, <laughs> with that. Um, they don't help their children learn more. They don't go into the robotics lesson. They're just like, oh, God, children are watching this again. Right. And I think that's where um, the transition from homeschooling to unschooling can take, the, can take place if you can change your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, one, another thing that I had uh, discussed with Kara was that um, – I said, chances are you already unschool your kids and don't even realize it. You just happen to be sending them to the, to the government indoctrination centers. And yeah. she asked me to, to elaborate. I said, well, when you're cooking dinner in the kitchen, what are your kids doing? Are your kids with you? Well, yeah. I said, well, well there you go. You're, you're teaching them how to cook. That's an unschooling lesson. You go to the store. You, you're teaching the kids that, hey, this box of mac and cheese is a dollar. This one is 75 cents. There's no difference. Get this. You know, everything is a lesson when you unschool. Every, literally everything you do can be turned into a lesson. Yep. And Absolutely. that's what you do. That's what you do with unschooling. Just pull your kids out of these prisons and just live life. Just live life as if as if the idea of school was never invented. There, there's no such thing as school. You, you learn every day. And one more thing I can reference <clears throat> was a video that really helped me uh, think about unschooling was a, uh, a Larkin Rose video called The Need for Education, and anybody out there who is looking, <coughs> who's thinking about unschooling or homeschooling their kids should really watch it. Uh, <clears throat> I can sum it up real quick. The, the video basically says, when, when you're a baby, think about this, you learn, you teach yourself a language on your own with nothing to go by. So it's not like, you know, if Sarah, if, if, if I were to teach you Mandarin Chinese, I would teach you Mandarin Chinese based on English, saying, okay, this means this, this means that, that means this, and you have something to go by. When you're a baby, you have nothing. There is nothing to go by but sounds and consonants and, and, and you know, just figuring it out. And eventually one day, as Larkin says, you just go, oh, mama. And you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, basically you go from there. You teach yourself a language. The point being... When you need to learn something, you learn it. And there have been studies that when you put a bunch of kids around with books, they teach themselves how to read. They pick up the books and they, they eventually figure out how to read. The idea that you have to stick them in a classroom and force them to learn things that they have absolutely no interest about is ludicrous and complete waste of time. Right. My oldest daughter was in school until she was in uh, third grade, almost the end of her third grade year. In first grade, they do their little reading tests and stuff. Um, she was reading at a third grade reading level. By the time we took her out of school in third grade, she was reading at a third grade reading level. I was like, we could do so much more at home. Because um, yeah. obviously reading is something that she loves to do, so why isn't sure. she reading at a third grade reading level? Because it's that, you know, okay, these are these students and then these are these students. We got to make them even out because we can't handle all of them. Right. right. 
<clears throat> and uh, some of you, some of you out there may notice uh, when you do decide to pull your kids, the schools will do absolutely everything they can to change your mind and and not have you go through with it. Um, uh, again, referencing my conversation with Kara, uh, she was told, you know, you're you're unqualified to teach. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I say it's complete. I say it's complete bull. You don't need to be qualified to teach. The kids learn on their own. You just leave them alone. Give them books. Give them Google. Give them YouTube. And there's a world of information at their fingertips. Go, 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 learn. Exactly. And as now, as they get older, your involvement is less and less. Um, I, I rarely have to do anything um, with my 11-year-old. She just ends up asking me questions. But she'll go. She'll see. She decided she saw some flowers at the tractor store, and she decided she wanted to grow them. And so she bought them with her own money. She read the back of the package on how to plant them. She put them all in the bowl. She planted them. She gave them sun and all that kind of stuff. Well, they didn't end up germinating. So now she knows okay, well, this didn't work. I watered them too much. I didn't give them enough sun at these times. They it said full sun, but we never had a place to put them. So now she's learned. She's going to go back and buy some more, and I can guarantee you these are going to grow. I didn't do any of that. She didn't even tell me she was doing it until I saw a big bowl of dirt in her bedroom. And I was like, why do you have dirt in your room? <laughs> and so it's just, they'll do it without us. We just have to get out of their way enough to where they can push through and then be feel safe enough, and that's where the, the peaceful parenting part comes in. And then they need to be able to feel safe enough to come and ask you questions right. because there will be things that they can't figure out on their own that we will have to help with. Or, you know, they're too small. <laughs> they can't, you know, pick up a pot pan or anything. Right. So. Yeah, I, I tell my daughter all the time, I said, I, you know, Mommy and I are, are here if you need us. If you have any questions or if you can't figure something out, you need a little help, yeah, we're here. But there's no need to park her in a chair and say, you must learn this. Now stick your face in the book and learn. Go. It just exactly. it just doesn't work that way. But the schools don't care. They just, you know, like yeah. I said before about them trying to talk you out of it, they just, with every, with every student that leaves the school that, that's less money for their, you know, budget or, or whatever, less federal money. So of course they freak out. Yeah, when we took Grace out, she's an excellent test taker. She'll make 100 every time with very little studying. Um, when we took Grace out, they said she is such a great student. We don't want to use her. And I was like, <laughs> that's because you're a poor school and you want the money that my daughter's going to bring in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had, you know, three other children that were going to be coming in too, so <laughs> Or we're supposed to be coming in. So they really don't. It's. I mean, granted, there are teachers out there that do care about their students. Oh yeah, they, yeah. I, I know a few of them. Sure. Yeah, and, and the problem is, is they they can't. They they don't have the resources. Um, they ha you know your students have to pass this test or you don't have a job kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it it really is. They will do almost anything. To keep your kids, that's for sure. Yeah, and um, yeah, and and uh, the, the bad teachers. It's really hard to get rid of the bad teachers because of the the teachers unions and they're locked in these destructive contracts. So even when, when if your child gets a, a really mean teacher who does not care, they literally tell you tough shit. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing. She won't be fired. We'll 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 talk to her or whatever. <clears throat> But yeah, the bad teachers, they do, you can't get rid of them. Right. And those are the bad ones are the ones that are older, that have been in the system for so long, that are jaded, <laughs> yeah. and they don't want to do shit about anything. <laughs> yeah. They just want to get paid. And I don't, I don't want somebody to just want to get paid. I, I want somebody who's going to care what my children think and how they feel, and who better to do that than me, because I see them on a daily basis. I know them better than anyone. You know, you know what I, I I notice is that if if you know any parents out there, if you have to have somebody you know teach your kid and, and help them and, and really work with them, hire a private tutor. I mean, this is this is what we talk about all day is free market economics stuff like this. And and when you have some young college kid who really needs that extra money, he's going to teach your kid a lot better than some eighty year old crab who just you know she's just waiting for her pension. 
Yeah. Well, well actually, I... that brings up a question, if you don't mind. <clears throat> um, I was thinking, like, if you have a tutor, uh, they're going to want to teach your kids in a uh, kind of a classical way. You know what I mean? Like, uh, sit down and do this kind of way, don't you think, or not? I, I guess it depends what to what tutor. I mean, you know, if they're working with you in math, maybe they'll just sit and work with you, or I don't know. What do you think, Sarah? Well, and it really just depends on the child. Um, I probably wouldn't hire a tutor for my 11-year-old. She just she's got to do it on her own. She's like her mother. If she's going to figure it out, it's going to be with her own doing. <laughs> my seven-year-old, well, she loves school. She loves sitting down and doing things. She likes workbooks. She likes writing you know, on the light paper. She likes that kind of stuff. So, yeah, there would be, uh, if there's an opportunity for me to hire a tutor for her for something that she's struggling with, I would more than be more than willing to do that. Um, but, like I said, she's only seven at this point, and so most of her learning is still literally playing outside and you right. know, just part of the world. Um, but I really think, and I think that's another part of unschooling and homeschooling, is you get to know your children. You get to know the ins, the outs, the everything about them, and so you know them so well, you know if they need a tutor or if they don't. You know they're not pushing themselves hard enough to actually learn, you know, what they're supposed to be learning or what what they say they want to learn, not what they're supposed to be learning. Um, and so it really is on a family-to-family -family basis. I have a friend um, that they do a lot of structured type stuff, but that's um, what they – that's what her children are very good at, um, and it works for them. Uh, I have uh, – and another friend besides that friend, and she unschools her children. She just doesn't realize that's what she's doing. Um, so that friend that's structured, she unschools, but they do they do work too. Mm -hmm. And then I have another friend that unschools, and she doesn't realize that that's what she's doing, but they learn everything. I mean, her seven year old is amazing. He's gonna be like the best businessman ever. And it's just, you just kind of you learn your kids. And then you help, the, because you, you know them, you help them know themselves. And once they know themselves, the world is at their feet. Right. Yeah, I, I agree a thousand percent, absolutely. Um, just curious, uh, because when I grew up, my mom seemed to know me pretty well, and I was in public schools. Um, I'm not sure if that's 100% uh, valid, but... Uh, uh, just to see the other side, um, I think my mom knew me. You know what I mean? I, I'm not. I'm trying to be devil's advocate. I agree with no, you. No, I'm just saying. Well, and I, like I said, everything's going to be different with different mothers. Um, I was not around my child for eight hours a day, five days a week, for months at a time, and so. You know, when she would get in these little, like, she'd be angry. And I'm like, why are you angry? Nothing is going on. Well, it wasn't because she was angry at something that was happening. It was because at school, she didn't get what they were doing. But she was too timid to ask, which, you know, she was five years old. I mean, five-year-olds don't really ask unless they're really flamboyant like my four-year-old. <laughs> um, Good point. And once she came home, I really started to watch her to be able to see her on a 24-hour basis um, and see, watch her, her cycles, so to speak, um, you know, her ups and downs and her good days and her bad days. And I really got to see what made her tick. Um, and so I started, I kind of formed my parenting to what she needed. Um, and with all of my other children, I did the same thing. I was not able to do that as well. Uh, when they were in public school, just because I wasn't with them. Um, but I see them on a regular basis every day now. And so it's a lot easier to figure out what they need a lot faster so they don't get frustrated. Yeah, there is a lot of learning al along the way, too, I wanted to add. Um, <clears throat> I've only been uh, an, an unschooler since, like, September or so. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's frustrations. There's, there's things I'm learning every day. Um, it, it's a learning process, so if you if you unschool, also 
I wanted to bring something up, and Sarah, you may know more about this than I do, but I actually learned a new term recently, and the term is called de-schooling. Have you heard this term? Yes, we spent almost. Hold on, second, baby. We spent almost an entire year um, de-schooling, not necessarily my children, but me, because I was so school was so ingrained in me because that was my whole life. Well, sure, I yeah. Literally oh, oh, went yeah. from school to having children. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> My husband's laughing at me. Um, <laughs> we had to spend a lot of time just not doing anything. And the not doing anything turned into, oh, well, actually we are doing something. I see where they're learning here. So it, it took a while for me to stop and stay out of my kids' way long enough for them to do the learning that they needed to do. Mm. Because at first, yeah, I was like, oh, my God, we have to learn this. <laughs> not at all <laughs> it has to go the other way is what you're saying yes yeah okay well yeah that makes a lot of sense I mean I guess you could say my wife and I are, are in the de-schooling phase right now um, because you know it's only been a couple of months and Porkfest last year was the first time I'd ever even heard the word unschool and this was not even a year ago so so I've gone from you need public schools. What else are you gonna do? To yeah, the hell with them. Let let's just live our life here. And uh, okay. yeah, the de-schooling is definitely a part of that. Uh, there's a lot of times I catch myself. I have to stay out of Marley's way, and I like I, I see her working on something, and I'm like, mm. I'm like, let me, let me help you with that. Let me help you. With that. Wait, wait. <laughs> She gets pissed too, and she's like, "No, Dad, stop it! Let me do it." And I, <laughs> I, I, My, I have to back off. Well, and if you if you really pay attention to children, especially young children who haven't been in school, um, whose parents actually let them do things and aren't you know like helicopter parents don't let them climb the monkey bars or whatever. Um, <laughs> if you really watch them, they will do it. My two year old, that child has never been in anything but my arms. Oh my goodness! You mess with that boy when he's trying to do something, he will ream you a new one. I mean, he's like, oh, "Mama, leave it alone. Stop it." <laughs> like, okay, dude, sorry. <laughs> so it really, if if um, children are left to their own devices, obviously in a safe environment, they'll do it. And you just gotta stay out of their way long enough. <laughs> and then I have a husband that I have to teach also. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's interesting. I, I never really thought that you'd have to, you know, uh, take your take your own um, uh, pre premonitions out of it or whatever. You yeah. know, like a. I, I don't know the right word for this, but um, you have to take yourself out of it, and I, I guess it's yeah, it's it's almost like in your case, John, like you wanted to help your daughter, and it's almost like you want to do it the right way the first time, right? But you yeah. learn from your mistakes, and the whole thing is, I get that feeling though, because I'm an engineer and I like to get things done right the first time. Like, I'm very quality-oriented, so it's going to be kind of difficult for me at first if I... Uh, the thing you've got to remember is your way is not necessarily the right way. Exactly. And the lesson was the absolute most hardest lesson I ever had to learn. And it took a lot of, a lot of tears, really, with my girls of, you know, okay, well this is the way I know how to do it, so here, let me show you, but then you're not doing it, and why are you not doing it like this, and oh my gosh. That's it. Um, so it's it's a very, um, the de-schooling phase is a very difficult phase, um, because you're scared, and you're thinking your children are not ever going to, you know, become anything, because they're not doing anything but watching TV. Um, but... Yep. You, it, it slowly, your mind changes slowly, especially when you see your children doing things that you're like, what? You can do that? That's awesome. I had a, I had a couple of those moments, yeah. And it, it's, it's little things. It's not like big monumentous things, but it's little things. You're like, wait a minute. I was just doing that for you yesterday. And it's yeah, like, yeah. I do it now. 
Like my five year old was cutting up. Well, she was well, she was six then. She was cutting up squash last year to boil and can with me. I was like, "You're six. Why are you using a huge butcher knife? Is this okay? Can you do this? Obviously, she could. That's it. Yeah, you, you got to take away your own uh, worries because the a lot of uh, I even saw this on the web. Uh, uh, like a day ago, I saw some kid holding a gun, and uh, I think the kid was probably five or six. I'm like, why are you holding a gun? Uh, but then again, I've never held a gun in my life anyway. I've held, like, laser guns, you know, for laser tag or something. But really, um, yeah, there's, there's no reason to not, because everything, everything is a tool. So there's no reason to, like, be that fearful uh, well, maybe up in, uh, you know, maybe once they're a toddler, <laughs> not a baby. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, no, we uh, we teach our daughter gun safety. She already knows all the rules, like the back of her hand. The gun's always loaded. Point it in a safe direction. Finger off the trigger. She knows all of them. Awesome. And, yeah, you know, she uh, she does look at them with with us, and uh, we do we we shoot them off in in uh, my mother in law's backyard sometimes. So, you know, she's not, um, we don't want her afraid of guns. <clears throat> Good. Uh, yeah, you really got to, uh, education is key. And uh, yeah. they learn. They learn. That's awesome. Our, um, well, I keep saying two-year-old. He's fixing me three. Our three-year-old was, <laughs> our three-year-old and four-year-old were shooting my husband's twenty-two uh, pistol the other day <laughs> at a bird that he had shot out of the tree, and they kept hitting it. And wow. I'm, I'm sitting there like, dude, you're like three. <laughs> How are you doing this? Who needs video games? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got birds and pistols. Come on. <laughs> no, that's so has got nothing on a Smith and Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love you too, baby. Oh, there we go. So I like um. I, I've grown up, when I was growing up, I, I think this was second grade or whatever, I was put into one of those, like, advanced classes for math, um, you know, and the thing about the advanced class of math is that they basically just taught us Roman numerals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. uh, it was interesting, I'll give you that, uh, I think there was a couple things more than just Roman numerals, but basically it was uh, kind of crappy. I mean, it was public education and, you know, I wasn't really learning any. Actually, this brings up another question. You say that um, pretty much every situation that um, a kid gets into is uh, a learning experience or what maybe Obama might call a teachable <laughs> moment or whatever. <laughs> But um, it's a potential learning experience, sure. Right. So I guess that brings up the question: How many lessons is that per day? Is that just a bolt load of uh, lessons uh, compared to public education? Yeah. Uh, oh. yes, there's sir. there's no way children are not learning because, like you said, when they're babies, they have nothing. And so they're literally, even if it's just, oh, well, that color's red. That's right. still a lesson because they don't start with anything. They have nothing. Um, so up until they get to the point where they're like, okay, I am actually interested in this. They're always learning. And yeah. even then, they're still learning. It's just not as in-depth. Only, only the things that they're really interested in are the really in-depth learning experiences. I think that in public education, uh, there seems to be a lot of repeating the same thing over and over again. Let's say um, mm -hmm. uh, in April or May, you learn so much, and then in September and October, you start learning the same thing that you just learned in April and May uh, because you're in a new grade and you have to, you know, uh, remember what... Yeah. 
it's uh, that's pretty pathetic, you know, when you're spending that much time going over something they definitely already knew, and you're losing something. Learning is not linear. Um, it's very much a linear. Um, you can't say, okay, here's your multiplication tables. Oh, and now since you know these, we're going to go into division. Our brains are not wired like that. They're synapses everywhere, and they're just going all which ways. So why would you think that? Okay, you have to learn this before you can learn this, because if you don't learn this first, then you don't have the foundation. Well, yeah, the foundation is good, but what if you already get the foundation? What if it's just, oh, okay, I read that, I get that. You know, we don't have to go through all of this. Um, and that's where the, um, you know, the gifted and talented type programs come in, is because kids already know this, and so they put them in these other programs, but, you know, then instead of higher education math, they teach them Roman numerals. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't work. It's right. um, a flawed system, and it's a system built to build consumers and little soldiers. I mean, that's that's really what it was built on. Hmm. And I, I don't want, I, we, well, we've already discussed this. We don't, we are not consumers. We don't like to be consumers in our family, so I don't necessarily want my children to be that, nor do I want them to be little soldiers. Yeah, so, no way. The end school. <laughs> right on. Yeah, John, like um, when your daughter goes to school uh, or went to school, you said uh, she went to school for how long? She did. She went to she went to public school kindergarten. Yeah. So I'm glad you figured it out early then. <laughs> oh, believe me, dude. Walking, uh, walking with her into the school to register her for kindergarten, my stomach was in knots, dude. I did not want to be there. Um, I knew what was going on. I saw the stuff on online. <clears throat> I knew all about, you know, Common Core and uh, you know, how they're, they're pushing a they're pushing a police state onto the kids with all the uh, the, the fake SWAT raids and the the fake. Um, the fake school shooter thing. My daughter was in kindergarten, and they're doing lockdown drills. They don't. They do fire drills still, but they were doing lockdown drills. Wow. Um, I I don't know what would you know, like a fire a fire alarm would go for for a fire drill. I don't know what would what would trigger a uh, a lockdown drill, but all the lights went out. You had to go. I think either like under your desk or like all into the corner, and everybody had to stay real quiet. It was a drill as if there was an active shooter in the school, what to do if there was, like, you know, if there was another Columbine or a Sandy Hook or something. <clears throat> and they're telling the kids, it's for your safety, it's for your safety, and, oh, yeah, we need to practice this so, we'll, so we could be safe. But the kids never really knew what was going on. They were just doing as they were told because grown-ups told them it would keep them safe. Yeah. And, and then that transfers to authority. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's conditioning for a police state and really pisses me off. So, if, you know, if that, that's one great reason to pull your kids from these places. Uh, actually, so when, you're, uh, when, when you sent your kid to kindergarten, were you an anarchist? Have you been an anarchist for a long time, John? Um, when, uh, let me think, when I brought her to school... I think I was, uh, I guess they call him Big L. I was a voter, and I would always, I would vote libertarian at least. But I don't, and I think I'd heard the term voluntarist and had started Googling non-aggression and things like that. So I, I think that's about where I was. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Uh, we got about, uh, say, about seven or eight minutes left. Um, anything you guys want to talk about? Um, any other subjects? Or same thing? Well, I want, especially parents who are considering unschooling, um, I do want them also to consider um, what is kind of, it's not really mainstream, but what mainstream calls peaceful parenting. Um, because how are your children supposed to learn if you're always reprimanding them? Um, it may be something that you think is not a good idea. Like, okay, we have a porch at our back. Our back porch is probably a good three feet high. My three and four-year-olds bail off of it. 
all the time. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're going to break your neck. Stop it. <laughs> there. And my husband, and this is, I mean, this is like recent, like yesterday, they were doing this. Um, my husband was the one that had to be, had to call me down and say, hey, look, they're learning how to fall. Because what if they fall out of, you know, a building? What if they're in like the World Trade type thing and they have to jump out a window? They know how to fall now. And I was, I mean, you know, that may not ever happen. But their little bodies are learning how they work, whether we see that or not. Um, and so there's things where you're like, okay, don't do this. You're going to hurt yourself. You have to pull yourself back. Um, and you have to be calm with your children. Otherwise, they'll be just like those children who have been going through all of these, you know, SWAT team pretend rage or whatever. They'll be conditioned to look to you and say, oh, my gosh, Mommy, can I do it? Do you really want your 30-year-old sitting there saying, Mommy, what do I do? <laughs> no, you want your children to grow into adults who can, you know, think for themselves. I mean, that's the whole point of anarchy is, you know, um, the self-reliance and self-responsibility and being able to actually think instead of just follow orders. Yeah. And so, and that starts with um, the peaceful parenting, uh, the attachment parenting, um, you know, the making sure your children are attached to you. Uh, until they can feel safe enough to become independent. Um, and so, obviously, that's a whole other show, probably two different shows. But those are attachment parenting, peaceful parenting, um, and then your dirty anarchists, your dirty anarchist kids, <laughs> all go together. All of it goes together. And it's not like, oh, okay, well, we're going to have school, but, you know, we're still going to be authoritative parents. It doesn't work well. You can do it. There's people out there that do it, I'm sure. It just it you you're kind of counteracting everything that you're teaching your children. Yeah, uh, when I was growing up, um, let's just say uh, I didn't have a uh, real respect for authority because of the way I was treated, and you know, in the end, there is no real such thing as authority. It's only ingrained in our heads, and. The, the idea is respect. I only will respect someone that will respect me. So, if, uh, and this goes for parenting as well. And I, you know, so I don't have respect for any, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't have respect for authority as it were. Uh, it doesn't matter where it comes from. And it, it Let's just put it this way. Violence solves nothing, ever. It never solves a damn thing. It just causes more chaos. Um, yeah. John, you want to uh, chime yeah. in? I, I almost wish we could have taken calls for the show because I, I really would have loved to answer some specific questions from, yeah. uh, from people. But uh, one, one thing I will touch on, and it seems to be, <clears throat> excuse me, seems to be the number one thing that I'm always, always, always asked whenever I talk about that I'm unschooling or, or homeschooling my daughter is, what about the social aspect? Aren't they playing with anybody? Yeah. And aren't they socializing? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> yeah, you know what we did today? What was that? I said, you know what we did today? <laughs> we played with 15 different children today. 15. That's so, great. no, we don't socialize at all, ever, ever. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the question itself is kind of illogical, thinking that <clears throat> you, you, can, oh, you can only socialize in school, not even thinking about all the, all the things your kids can do outside of school, karate, basketball, baseball, Cub Scouts, whatever. Yeah, and maybe not Cub Scouts. Whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, <laughs> military and training, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is your kids are doing outside of school, they're socializing. But you want to send them to this public school that you know is bad, but you know what? Just like what about my roads? What about my socializing? <laughs> well, like, how are you really socializing with a group of twenty-five-year-olds? That's not socialization. That's like an internment camp. I mean, right? It, you're it's not learning anything new. It's it's only with kids their own age. And they get in trouble for socializing. I, my daughter came home with no teacher <laughs> today. Marley was talking in class. Marley was, you know, <laughs> talking again. Marley was talking to her friends. And it's like, well, no shit, because she sees all these other little kids. 
and she's bored as hell in school, so of course yeah. she's going to talk. But it's just, I mean, with 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 all the the riffraff we can call that that's in public school. I mean, trust me, you don't want your kids socializing in public school for the most part. I mean, you know, I've made some very good friends in public schools, but the the if if the only reason you're not pulling your kids is for the social aspect, you really need to rethink this. And like I said, you know, put them in put them in karate or little league or or whatever. Adult scouts. You can socialize, and you can do so many things. Oh, and with Facebook, too. I mean, you can hop on Facebook, find a local group of homeschoolers in your area, and there you go. Meet, a, meet up at the park once a week, meet at the museum once a month or whatever. The Internet has made it easier than ever to socialize. And 20 years ago, this might have been an issue, but it's just it's not anymore. It's, it's time to get your kids out. And if that's the only thing holding you back, then really think about it. Yeah, that's... Great, John. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I gotta wrap this up. Um, uh, the next show we're gonna have live is uh, March thirtieth, uh, and uh, that live show will be um, edited and then posted March second, I believe. Uh, nope, March first. And um, yeah, so just uh, real quick, uh, where can we find you, Sarah, once again? Uh, Dirty Anarchist Kids. That's my Facebook page. <laughs> it's not Facebook big. Page. I just barely started it, like, I don't know, six months ago. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's lots it's of fun. Cool and... It's a cool page. It's one of my favorite ones. That's awesome. Hey. <laughs> lots and lots of pictures. That's what we do. It's all about the mud. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, can... and... John, where can we find you again? I uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You can find me over at uh, New, the New Sons and Daughters of Liberty. Um, there's several pages with uh, that name, and it's not the most original name, but I don't care. Mine is the one. With the, <laughs> my profile pic has the, uh, the the old school, the Minuteman guy from the you know the Revolutionary War Minuteman guy, and he's in front of a uh, black and yellow hand uh, cap flag. Right on. Uh, we'll uh, have the title and uh, graphic. And uh, thank you very much, both of you. Uh, I think this is uh, very enlightening. Uh, it's actually enlightening for me, for sure, because I know I want to do this kind of thing um, in the future. And so you're directly influencing me. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, so long, everybody. Take care. <laughs>